We're going in, guys. It is Cloud9 versus Netco Guides here on Dust2 for the Face It League North American Edition. It's interesting how the CT side has become the favoured side to start on for uh, Dust2. Whereas earlier in the life of CSGO, people always went for the T side. But now the meter, the meter game is evolving, DDK. And uh, I don't know if it's necessarily more favourable, but I, I do think that it's it's feels better. Like it's if that if that if that does anything. It's for you, not favourable, but it feels better. Yeah, like it's 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 a, it feels better to get to grips with how well you perform and know what you have to do on the T side. Doesn't that make it more favourable to play what to play CT? By the way, we're in the pistol round, so that's a discussion we can have later. We see Netco guys bullying Cloud9 off of the A bomb site completely. Both for uh, Sean Gares and Shroud are going to go down. We've got nothing swinging in from Long. He's going to pick up one kill as he makes his way in. But there's a three and four situation, so they're going to have to find some more frags here very soon. The bomb ticking away on the site. They're in a decent position here to attack together up. Slope It's going to be easily handled, though. Just Hiko left on the reload with that 5-7. And he's not going to get a single thing. And that was wonderfully executed there by Netco, guys. Just a straight up long rush. That's all you need. Plain and simple. So, who were we just on? So, JDM64, you can see he's got, uh, he had 93 armor remaining. But because he didn't have a helmet, um, he had to buy basically full armor again for $1,000. Had his armor been untouched, then he would have been able to uh, top up his armor and get a helmet for $350, but uh, not going to be the case in this round. They're actually pushing into B right now. Going to take a pick onto Hiko straight away. And no cheeky frags found with the pistols just yet for Cloud9. And they did go for what seems to be pretty much a full eco here as well. No, no grenades, no... Uh, just, well, just a couple P250s, and that, that's about it, really but mostly USPs otherwise. So, you know, Cloud9 not really investing at all into this round, which is uh, totally fine. Obviously, they are going to be wanting to run with some expensive setups moving into uh, future rounds, with, you know, featuring those AWPs. Trying to get some extra kills. Going to find one frag under Haste, which is something, but... Uh, Almost a fetal position there. <laughs> and uh, see one more eco here from uh, Cloud9. And they're going to have a very healthy buy coming in. So it should be another easy anti eco for Netco guys. So we'll see what the setup is for both teams here. Looks like the uh, Netco guys team will be heading towards the A bomb site here. Early peeks into long, but gets taken down by the P250 of Sean Garris. And uh, it's a 4 on 4 here, so still Netco guys with the advantage. Let's see if they can dispose of that gun on long. Maybe throw it onto blue, or maybe they'll just leave it and just charge towards the B-bomb site. Sorry, the A-bomb site, but... It's actually a pretty good setup from Cloud9, actually. They have a guy over card, does find a thing, and right now, I mean, they're going to take down two players, but still, the remaining two are actually able to find some angles here, as Netco guys guys do make their way up onto the site. So they, sh they could actually pull out a couple kills here. Obviously, it's not so realistic to like try to expect a retake of the of the uh, of the site here once it is taken by Netco guides. But either way, maybe Hiko is gonna be able to pull out a frag. There's a couple of weak players, but no, he's not gonna find anything. Just JD JDM going down for them that round. So pretty clean stuff here. We're seeing the bank really build for Netco guys, but now we get to see the full buy coming in. And one big difference from American teams and European teams is that we see American teams favoring the M4A4 much, much more. Look, we see four M4A4s on the side of Cloud9, which is Unprecedented in the EU right now. We do not see that in the EU. Usually, it's just it's just full M three one S right now. Yeah, that's a really interesting point, actually, and another example of how the styles across the continents uh, are conflicting. Could be a map only choice, but I'm not mm. sure. Yeah, it's not necessarily the style of map compared to others where you need to uh, into your position. So, you could just go for that full aggression with the 30 clip magazine of the M four A four. And uh, it's a good round here from Cloud9, uh, shutting down Netcode Guides pretty solidly here. Netcode Guides only with JDM64 and uh, Tarek remaining. Tarek goes down and JDM64 is going to be unable to save his AWP this round with all that time left on the clock. And that's almost a clean sheet for Cloud9, only Sha Sean Garrow's going down. Yeah, big round there from Cloud9, some great aggression all across the map. And 
of course, the uh, the rifles working out really, really well for them, able to get up close and personal, especially able to spam through those smokes. The recoil definitely much harder to deal with on the M34 and, and the accuracy at times, but uh, Cloud9 really making it work out for them, and just as they did at LAN as well. And right now we're seeing a very standard split here, but we have Sean Gezi, he's trying to get in his way up towards the Xbox there for a sneaky pick with that AWP, gets forced backwards. Really nice stuff here from Netcode, guys. Got to smoke it all off, get that short control, and then after that, they can really make that call, whether they want to split onto A or to B. Both options are fully viable right now for them as they secure map control. But they really need to get short first. They're probably going to be looking to do, do that relatively soon. And if not, I guess we should expect the B play to come in. CTs have left mid entirely for the time being. Put two people on, on the... Uh on the B-bomb site, including Hiko, who has got an AK. And again, um, currently the star player, in my opinion, for Cloud9. They're going to want to be careful around him, but the bomb is going to start to creep towards the B-bomb site here, and Hiko's got the sneaky position. He may have his uh, teammate Shroud bait for him while he conceals his position there, and this could be trouble for the T side. But it looks like a B-split with three people in mid. So, uh, in fact, this is going to expose Hiko's position and make it very hard for Cloud9 to hold here. In comes the B split. We get frags happening all over the place here for Netcode guys. Just need to grab one more Hiko. Oh, look at that maneuver maneuvering rather through the smoke. Only able to find one kill though. And looks like nothing coming in. Geronimo action as he does take down two players. We have a one on two now. Hayes remaining for Netcode guys. Has to get the bomb down. It's not a very safe plant, but that's not really the there's concern at the moment. Got two players on coming, and Sean Gare's gonna take him out. It's a good recovery there for Cloud9. It was looking like a very, very tight uh, B split there from Netcode guys. They really fell out the round very well. You know, Cloud9's presence diminished rapidly uh, from middle, and they kind of uh, they abused that. Yeah, you could saw you saw um, Hiko using that smoke to his advantage, staying alive for as long as possible, then eventually getting a, a little bit of a flank on the T's as they pushed deep into the B bomb site, which really helped his teammates and uh, made it a bit easier to retake the site. So good play there from from Netcode guys for the split and Cloud9 to uh, put the extra man onto the B bomb site and kind of just hold out for as long as possible and fall down on their swords. And lovely little bit of aggression there from Sean Gears. That tells them a lot, uh, making moves like that. And Cloud9 right now do have a very defensive setup all across the map. They, they're not very committed off of the information Sean Gears got from them. It's only kind of adding to you know pieces to the puzzle as opposed to really giving them anything to make any big calls on. And again, Netco guys, same same movement here around Xbox in the middle next to the double doors. And they do have Haze up on short. So let's see what they go for again. Again, this is a, they can definitely go for another B split here, just as they did the previous round. But it looks like Hayes moving quite up, quite far up short here. And they are posturing towards A long as well. So we are looking at this A split to come into play very shortly from Netco guides. He does, uh, he is kind of leading the peaks on short, but only has the Galil, which means he's going to need two strikes to the head to take someone that with there. And uh, I don't know if it would be a better option to get an AK going, but nothing's taken two people out in the meantime. And uh, Tarek gets a trade kill, but then Sean Garris with the return trade from on long. It's going to be a 4v2 here. Sean Garris makes it a 4v1. And uh, Hayes is going to be in trouble. Unable to get the bomb down for his team, and it looks like they are going to be on an eco. They did force that round with uh, four rifles and one person only with a P250. So um, they may, may have to concede this one to get a full buy on the following round. Yeah, that's one of those rounds where we can see, we could see on the on the minimap as spectators that Cloud9 had the best setup for A. Um, you know, two guys close on long. We saw nothing able to really shut them down as they try to push out there. And uh, we'll have to see whether Netco guys can do much here with these. Uh, on this eco, but uh, by and large, I feel like if Netco guys could have seen, like like we can as spectators, the full you know overview of the map of, with all the players and their positions, then they would have probably gone for a B split there. And uh, so it, I guess they were really trying to find that info, and they just couldn't get it in time. And then they felt like, all right, we got to go for a call right now, and they went for the A split. Actually, seeing some frags coming out from the pistols though. Let's see what they're able to do, and um, if they're able to actually even pick up some of those weapons, not in the in the safest of locations. That's what he said, but there goes the smoke for CD spawn there from Cutler. He tries to work that CZ, not able to find anything just yet. But good damage done so far from Netco Guides. JDM going to go down on the short as well, and Cutler cleaned up too. So 4 to 3 the score there in favor of Cloud9, but Netco Guides have been putting in some great rounds so far. 
That was uh, not two nice picks from JDM with the P250 there, showing the power of that rifle. Did uh, enter the shadows somewhat when uh, CZ was in the same slot, but uh, it's back now, and I'm glad to see it. So, two both teams on a full buy here. We've got two AWPs, and uh, Sean Garrett's tagged down to 20 HP by JDM64, and uh, Shrad will come down to mid and just hold the angle now that his teammate has been damaged somewhat. So, uh, you know, we've seen so far that Cloud9 tend to uh, give up mid towards the latter parts of the round. At the moment, they have two people, one returning over to the A bomb site. The bomb is currently in B tunnels, and uh, we've got four guys mid for netcode guys. We'll see if they choose to push mid and uh, pinch the B or what they do. They've still got um, Cutler here hanging out outside Luke, long. Can and go for Sean, actually, look. And Semphis and Sean Gares had a sick setup to deal with that. They do get a couple frags. So Netco guides, their hand has been shown at the moment, and they lost two men for it as well to the one of Semphis. So that's a really big deal. Cloud9 look very favorable in this round right now, as nothing still stalks the long house area on the CT side of things. Just keeping it on lock. And Netco guys slowing the pace down to a crawl now as they try to find an edge, an opening to flip the switch onto a plant attempt, but so far not finding any luck. You can see Cutler, who was running up uh, to short from long, but he would have been heard by uh, nothing who's on short, who would have given the infos to his teammates who are now all rotating over to the A bomb site, and two picks from Stroud, uh, who does get taken up by JDM64, and it's a 2v1, so he's got 11 HP, he does have the AWP, however, until he gets taken up by nothing. The 5 3 Cloud9 with a great round there. They had a perfect setup on short to deal with the, the four man. I think, was it three or four man aggression? It was, it was a lot of dudes. They killed some dudes. Many dudes were killed by Sean Gers and. Some uh, would say it was a sausage Memphis fest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could definitely call it that. And it was something that Cloud9 came on top of. So let's see right now if Netco guys can find another answer here. As uh, so far, Cloud9 have been mixing up their positions and it's just been working out. Really nicely. Sean Gares needs to get punished for these peaks. He's going aggressive very often through the double doors. And Netco guys haven't really been able to punish him just yet. Great pop flash there. Picatla gets the first kill. Looking for the second. Sprays down Shroud as well. And it's a three on three situation. Now Netco guides in an interesting position here. Can FNS actually get a tap away here? I think that's. Who is that there? I can't see exactly which player that is. Either way, FNS does actually find Hiko. So again, 2 1 2. Very poor health situation for both teams, to be honest. Tarek on 10, nothing on 12, and Cloud9 Semphis on 41. CDM looking for the frag, going to find it on Semphis, or on nothing right now. Who's got next to nothing as far as health is concerned? Only 12 points, going to charge his way in there after the nades go off, but look at that JDM64, going to take it home after just going and showing nothing. What's up? 5-4, to four. now Netco guys bringing it back. Great little round there from them. Yeah, that was a good round, and uh, we'll see what happens in the next one. JDM64 is going to buy the last AK for his team, so they've got next to no grenades on their team, but uh, they have got the one-shot hits with the uh, AK. All they need to do is aim for the head. Tempest does go down, gets the first one to get popped in the skull by uh, Hayes, and we'll see if the terrorists can play on this. And they've taken down nothing as well. We've got a full rotation to the A bomb site from Cloud9 here, and... Uh, we do have Cutler who's lurking in B tunnels and may find the information that means his team rotate. Oh, nice shot from Sean Gares there. Just a pixel on the top of his head there, just catching that, that guy in the helmet. And right now, 4 on 3 situation. And the entire map is the playground for Netco guys right now. They can do so many things. Going to go for this uh, play on to B. They know that it's empty at this point, they've got to know it. He could going to toss a grenade through the smoke. And it's going to be pretty hard to get through there, but it's uh, definitely a very viable assumption to understand that they've all pushed onto the bomb side at this point. It should be relatively safe. I'm going to try to synchronize their efforts here. Got a player who could go dark, actually. No, it's not. Okay, he's going to go dark now. Switched up direction. He will go dark. And it's like they're just going to hold their, their weapons, actually, and just uh, play for maybe some extra kills and just to save their weapons. Yeah, I think... Uh 
a 3v4 retake with one of the three being an AWP is always going to be difficult for Cloud9. So I think they were positioning to try and get an early peak, sorry, an early, an, uh, an early frag in that situation to see if anyone was overpeaking from the tees. No peak came, so uh, they they chose wisely and decided to get out of there. Saving three Terrorist weapons is um, quite a smart idea in this yep. particular situation. But the next round is going to be tough, um, not only to win, but even to just to save these weapons for the following round. Yeah, it's going to be interesting uh, what Sean Gez does here. He's been very aggressive at the start of rounds, typically. Um, it looks like he's going to go on a bit of a timing here with the AWP. Usually he's been working mid, but obviously you'd expect them to do something a little bit less orthodox when they are running a setup that's a little bit fragile with not many nades and a pistol and a FAMAS in it, along with their regular rifles. So interesting stuff here, Sean Gez. Waiting on the angle. He's going to whiff the shot there and... It's going to give them some information. Now, we've had uh, Cutler, who's basically been the guy hanging around outside long every round. And the bomb is still in T-spawn at the moment with uh, with Tarek, um, rather than JDM64. He's got the AWP. And we've got a double stack here to peek, to peek short from Cloud9. We have got one person who's already advanced, but are they going to get the peek here? We could possibly get two here. Great stuff over the smoke there that's supposed to block the vision. It's a, a great, great little move that's that's in the meta right now. And you can see that it's, uh, one man aside, it does go down shroud for Cloud9 and GDM64 for Neko Guides. So they're going to go for this B aggression right now. Nothing going to spray. Pays down through that, uh, through that flash. Does get a second one. Hiko chiming in with a third. It's all on Cutler at this point. It seems like he's getting picked away at by Hiko. Hiko does get taken out in the end, though. Cutler moving on for a double. Two players left. He's going to go for the bum rush out the doors. He's going to get sat down. And there you go. Six to five, the score there. Very tense stuff. We can see how close the money is with these two teams. Obviously, um, it is on the a raise. They're walking a razor's edge right now, as a, as a you know, with the economy game and all that. That was good execution there from the CTs with only three rifles. They didn't have enough to even spread the money around. Uh, their place had about 1,100 on average in that round, so that was uh, well played by them to come out with the W. That's one Garaz is trying to find somebody's head in mid. We'll find Cutler's chest, however, that'll do for now. And. Uh, Falling like flies in this eco, and there's the head. Tarek, the last guy remaining for the terrorists here. Uh, doesn't have the bomb either, so it's going to be a slow death for him. Yeah, you can see it was a bit of an awkward money situation for them. Like Some of them could even afford like pistol armor and stuff. Obviously, they, they bought just uh, as much as they could so that they can still buy the next round. So they had just shy of what they really wanted for, for a buy, so they, they just went with this like really weird buy um, just to make sure that they could actually do something this round and have a strong, solid buy on the following round. We can see the full money. And they really want to get an AWP to challenge uh, Sean Gares, I should imagine. But they haven't really been running AWPs so far, so perhaps this is not in the cards for them. They have been able to punish him so far, but look, Hayes actually going to buy that. And JDM going to pick up that AWP. And look, he's going to face up against Sean Gares. He's not going to win the AWP duel. And Sean Gares going to get the... Uh, the confidence to go push out towards Xbox, looking for the lower dark shot, hits it as well, drops the bomber too. Two men already taken down by the man, Sean Gares. Even gets the triple there, bomb down again. Sean Gares looking for the next one, Cutler will finally end his streak. And Hayes going to try to make his way in for a pick on B, denied, no entry there either. And it seems that there's just not much that, that could guys can really accomplish in this round when Sean Gares is just having such free picks. That must be frustrating for Neko guys. They were expecting Sean Garrows to be where he's been for a lot of the rounds here um, by Xbox, and they threw the flash down, but for some reason it didn't flash him. I don't know if it was if there was part of the uh, part of the map was blocking the flash, but uh, it it was a very momentary momentary flash, all of you know point one of a second. Then he was just beasting that round. I think he got a three man there. So great play there from. Sean Garris, and it looks like Neko Guides will once again be on an eco. We may be looking at 10-5 here. Certainly, so it's, I think it's worth just checking Sean Garris out because he gets so ballsy with these these moves. You would expect sometimes, or at least you would expect if he keeps consistently doing it, which he has been, for them to try to be like, all right, let's punish him. He, he shouldn't be allowed to do this. But let's go in for that straight up long rush, you know, going into the blender, as it were. And it's a pretty, pretty simple cleanup there, only losing Semphis. So, economy 
super awesome for Cloud9. Obviously, at this point, it doesn't even matter for them as uh, there's only this last round to play for for the first half. Cloud9 looking at a really strong start. And we've got JDM with that a AWP now. So after 14 rounds, after 13 rounds, sorry, they, they finally decided to try and smoke off Sean Garris and did it on an eco round. So uh, maybe a little bit too, too, too little, too late here with regards to uh, the counter Sean Garris threats. And they can actually go for the, sm the boost to see over on short for the smoke again. They actually have two players both there, but having done it once, they may not feel comfortable to show it twice in, uh, in one match. Which is, which is, you know, more than fair enough. And we can see that Netcode guys, you know, they're taking control of what should be their real estate. You know, dark, short, outside, you know, the T half of long house. And uh, it's slowly expanding into short right now. But Sean Gares has moved around position. He's going to find the frag on Hazed. And now Netcode guys going to go for it through the double doors. This really feels like the only chance for them at this point. What can they find with this? Going to make their way towards B right now, but Cloud9 surely soon will figure this out. They do have a player in CT spawn? Hiko ready with the grenade. Shroud in a great position at the back of the site. Hiko going to finish off FNS. He was softened up by Shroud there. Going to also take down Tarek. JDM falls. Netco guys go down like dominoes for a 10 5 first half here. Cloud9 out the gate. They start strong. Yeah, that was an uh, excellent play by Sean Garris. He was just basically unstoppable in that round and uh, topping the leaderboard at the moment, 16 kills and seven deaths. Uh, yeah, he was just he was just far too powerful. They didn't smoke him off until round 14 and that was an eco round. So I don't think Nick Code Guides uh, adjusted fast enough to uh, Sean Garrett's play mm. there and it gave him too much room to execute. I mean, he shot them in lower tunnels far too many times. Yeah, you shouldn't be able to push up that much, should you? I mean, that it's like it's very well. viable. There's like a risk, you know, every once in a while. But Sean Gares, that wasn't every once in a while. That was every round, pretty yeah. much. Do it, do it until they stop me, basically. And they yes. never really did. Exactly. There are different ways to deal with that. But we are into the pistol round now. And got some CZs actually here for Cloud9. On the by haste. What a drop Sean Gares there. And they make them move into the bomb site. Nothing with the first kill there, Shroud on with the second. And they're going to get the bomb down for a 3-on-3 three three situation. Tarek going to go in straight away. Gets taken down just as quickly as he arrived. Probably going to go in now as well. Got to try to you know, synchronize here, but there is a smoke, I think, on the double door, so that's going to be really problematic for them. They're both trying to get themselves through that window, squeezing through, but not quite going to work out. And lots of crucial time being killed by this smoke on the double doors. He's in cut there, trying to make it work out. They come now. And it's going to be, oh, not quite. Shroud and Hiko left alive. And the round does go to Cloud9. So this is uh, definitely not the way the Netco guys wanted to start their CT half. No, we're looking at 13-5 uh, for our Netco, unless the Netco guys can pull something out of the hat here. Hiko going with the uh, Galil. We've got a scout on Sean Garros here, which he, we've seen what he can do with it at the SL1. Uh, double scout again for, for Netco guys. Again, it seems to be... Proving to be a popular eco choice is Double Scout, so we've seen it from various teams. Um, to limited success. A bit uh, of altercation there towards B, actually. It seemed like Cloudline wanted to try to bully their way through, but got kind of denied there. We saw a trade go either way, so not much uh, ground gained on, uh, on B. They Cutler looking for the jump shots and the Scout on B, so it looks like they still have their eyes trained on hitting that B site, and the call has to go from Cutler now to his teammates over the voice comms. It's going to be B, and in they rotate, but it's a pretty big distance for a couple of the players, so this site is wide open and up for the taking. So we'll see, yeah, they've got uh, loads of bodies, so they'll go for the plants, and then go for the slaughter. Three guys left. I mean, Shroud and Sean Gares are pretty weak. FNS coming from the back with the 5-7. The they synchronize well. They might be able to find in, a, in the perfect storm the frags that they need. Here goes nothing. Spraying through the door is going to take down two. And there it is. 12-5 to five the score. And Netco guys suffering massively here. Going to need an eco. And Cloud9 just going to build that bank. Eco with the Cerberus. Galil there. Throwing it over to... Is he throwing it to Sean Garris? Yes. So again, 2 of 5, and it's uh, full eco here for 
the Netcode Guides team, and we are going to be looking at 13-5 here unless uh, JDM pulls out some more headshots, but he has got the USP, not the P250 here, so he's gone for a full economical non-purchase. The Nothing and Shroud take out FNS. And this is looking like a standard anti-eco round here so far. Yeah, I really like that they actually rush short like that so quickly because you kind of eliminate all the potential like Heidi spots with a short push. And the eco going to spray down too. And uh, looking for the third one there. I wonder if he'll get the triple. It looks like Shroud might just steal that away from him. And there it is. Going to take away that triple from Hiko. But yeah, I, I like it. I like it. You know, the short rush. I mean, how can you really get screwed over by close range angles? We know CZ's hiding around. There's not really many spots. I mean, once you're on the site, it's uh, it's pretty much all open ranges, so uh, kind of a nice little anti-eco with the fast uh, short push. I like that. I want to see more of that. But uh, yeah. now we get the buy from Echo guys. It it's is worth time. noting that uh, that extra two hundred dollars has really limited the the how much the uh, we see the CZ compared to just a few weeks ago. Actually, yeah, it's perfect. I think it is working out wonderfully in Cloud9 going to make their way through for a B split. That's what this is all about right now. Been very, very fast. I think they've telegraphed this now to Netco guys. Got to make the call and the rotation should come in, but it's going to be hard for those. Smoke Cutler going to take down the bomb. Looking for the second. Runs out of bullets on that M4. Hiko runs out of bullets as well. Pistol Jewel going to go the way of Hiko and it's a three on three. But the bomb actually going down, it was delayed massively by Cutler. So in getting the one frag and the huge delay there, that's that's already a big effort there. It's still a three on three, but Pico's very low. So Netco guides want to make their way in here. The tension is palpable. So an incredibly important round for them if they want to have a, any hope to win this against Cloud9. Just waiting for the synchronization. They're waiting a long time. That's a problem. Do get one kill there, but it is a little bit. They've got no kit. Go for this, and they do get all the frags. And it's gonna be FNS with the last two. There's not, there's not enough time. Is there time? I don't think he's got time. That's, is there time? Is there time? Oh, he might just have it. Oh, oh man, man. Very so close, so unbelievably close. It's a crushing defeat there, but you know, milliseconds, yeah. surely. Oh, that was so so crucial as well. But you're right, they, they waited just a tad little too long. That's the thing, sometimes when you're trying to retake these sites, it's like you're trying to wait for that perfect retake you know, time, but it's never, it just never, it just doesn't exist. Mm, they still managed to eke out a buy here, AWP and four, ma four FAMASs, so JDM probably saved that one. Uh, his team probably saved that, that weapon from the previous round, as one of them did manage to escape. Great little smoke there, actually. It's going to help FNS out a lot. So they are going to spam him down considerably. Cloud9 going to make their way through. They just don't care. Going to flash their way through, get themselves up short onto the A-bomb site. Got two orbs running here for Shroud and for Sean Gez. Pretty uh, novel setup here to go super aggressive with, but it's working out so far. They're getting the kills and just, wow, Cloud9 showing off some individual prowess. Bomb dropped in a precarious position though, <laughs> but it uh, doesn't matter in the end. Shroud's Dragon Lore is called, I bought this drunk. <laughs> RIP salary because damn those <laughs> yeah. guns are expensive it is expensive 15 to 5 the score and it's match point now for Cloud9 so again Necroglide still managing to eke out some semblance of a buy here JDM with no armor but uh, the rest of his team do have the helmets as well FNS going to be the first to fall here and this is looking like Cloud9's game yeah, it's already overwhelming the odds that are stacking up against Netco guys. Yeah, I mean, they already. were before the game even started on CSGO Lounge. Yep. No, they actually get a couple of frags back. They actually make it into a two on two, but there comes the Dragon Law there. And let's see if uh, JDM can save the day one on two. Can I try to sneak through the smoke perhaps? Times it well. Oh, there's the first one on one. It's exactly the way to do it. And there's the double. JDM going to secure it. So 15 to 6. And JDM keeps their hopes alive, just if not for just one round longer. Yeah, the terrorists are still going to be able to buy this round. Full armor, full AKs, a few nades here and there. So uh, the way they've been storming the bomb sites and just general areas of the map. I don't think they're going to be terribly concerned with the lack of nades on their side, so we'll see what they can do with this. JDM nice. being boosted up short for an aggressive position, looking down to lower A, but uh, Senf is going to be the first. He's a leg there. And 
it's going to fall to Shroud. Yeah, big, uh, big risk, no return. And now it's Cloud9 steamrolling them right now. Only two players left. Their days are numbered. Cutler going to fight back to take down Semphis. It's like Tarek also going to take down Sean Gares. And it's a 2 on 2. All of a sudden, this happened last round, but it won't end the same way. It is GG's call from both teams 16 to 6.